Hey everyone, this is Justin. I just wanted to uh, sit down and have a little chat. Uh, I wanted to talk about the relevance of the Bible today. Now I'm going to take this on a little bit of a different stance. I'm going to talk about the science and how science applies to the Bible as well. It's kind of a little bit of my forte here. Now, there was a book written by Ellen White uh, called Education, and I would recommend anybody to read that book. It's really good. In chapter 14, it says, Since the book of nature and the book of Revelation bear the impress of the same mastermind, they cannot but speak in harmony. By different methods and in different languages, they witness to the same great truths. Science is ever discovering new wonders, but she brings from her research nothing that, rightly understood, conflicts with divine revelation. The book of nature and the written word shed light upon each other. They make us acquainted with God by teaching us something of the laws through which he works. Now, if I can sum up all that flowery language real quick, I would say God, if God created everything, then God invented science. Science belongs to him. It's his. And as children, we are heirs to, to his, his kingdom. We are, we are heirs. In other words, science, we don't have to fear it. We do not have, and when I say the word science, okay, and many of you may have even heard that science and the Bible don't belong together. That does not make sense from a creation or even a Christian perspective. You see, real science is testable or measurable. It's observable. It's repeatable and uh, <clears throat> demonstrable. And, and, oh, I'm sorry, and it's demonstrable. In other words, I can demonstrate it to you. I can repeat, I can repeat it, and it's something observable and, and uh, uh, measurable as well. See, and that's what I mean. That's real science. And I would suggest any of you use that, use that method when you look at anything that somebody claims is science. Can you actually observe this happening? Or is it an anomaly? So with that, I'm going to give you a little bit of an encouragement here. I'm going to go through the Bible, just to give about maybe five, six, or seven uh, little scriptures that talk about different things in science far before humanity ever discovered it. The first one I want to talk about is in the book of Job. It's uh, in the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 35. And it says, Can you send out the lightnings, Job, that they may go and say to you, Here I am? Obviously not, because this is talking about the electromagnetic spectrum. Now, inside the electromagnetic spectrum is, is a couple of little slices called microwaves. And this gentleman behind me is using a cell phone, which is sending a message and saying, Hey, here I am. Come pick me up. <laughs> so my point is, is that when it comes to the Bible, or, and when it comes to, the, I'm sorry, when it comes to this verse, it's talking about the electro, electromagnetic spectrum and microwaves and, and sending communications through the airwaves and, and, and stuff like that and send through electricity far before, thousands of years before humanity ever discovered it. Let's keep going. Here's another one. In the book of Job, once again, uh, chapter 26, verse 7, it says, He stretches out the north over empty space. He hangs the earth on nothing. In Isaiah 40, verse 22, he says, It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. This says two things. Number one, the earth is round. And number two, the earth is hanging in empty space. Today, empty space. Today, we call it outer space. But what this, what this proves dis, dis, succinctly is I was always told when I was younger that the, it was the Christians that believed that the earth was flat. And now we don't because now we know better. But the fact of the matter is, is that the Bible never states that the earth is flat. In Psalm uh, chapter 8, verse 8, it talks about this. It says, The birds of the air and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the seas. What's the path of the sea? Is there a path in the sea? Yeah, we call them ocean currents. Those of you, those of you who have a bit of a sailing history, especially on the ocean, if a sailboat wishes to travel quite rapidly, they would study the ocean currents. Because if they uh, got caught in the proper ocean currents, they can actually travel faster 
around the world and across the world than they can because uh, for quite frankly uh, some of the voyages uh, around the time of uh, Christopher Columbus had a rough time of it because they didn't even know that but if they would have read their Bibles which the man who actually discovered the currents in the ocean read his Bible he read these verses and he goes hmm I wonder are there paths in the sea very interesting In the book of Job, once again, in the book of Job, chapter 38, verse 16, it says, Have you entered the springs of the seas, or have you walked in search of its depths? What this is talking about is the springs of water. Now, what's a spring? Spring of water is fresh water. That's it. It's fresh water. There is literally, and you guys can look this up, fresh water ocean vents. Just, just search it out in any search engine. Fresh water ocean vents. And there are these giant vents that are pouring warm or even hot or even boiling water out underneath the crust of the earth, underneath the ocean floor, fresh water, fresh water. Now, humanity, we've discovered this, I think, in the last 50 years, within the last 50 years or so, because we haven't had the technology to reach the ocean floor until the last 50 years or so. Actually, I think the la around the last 50, uh, 30 years or so. But this is awesome. God already knew this. God knew this. And it was in Scripture. Science is very slowly catching up with Scripture. Now here's, here's one in 1 Kings chapter 7, verse 23. And it says, And he made the sea of a cast of bronze, ten cubits from one brim to the other. It was completely round. Its height was five cubits tall, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference. Now, I took a look at this because I forgot how to measure the circumference of a circle. So, I looked it up. And it is actually C equals pi times the diameter. So, circumference actually equals pi times the diameter or 2 times the radius times pi. And you'll get the same, you'll get the same thing. But if, when you look at this and you calculate this out, go ahead and take a look at it. Check me out. In uh, 1 Kings chapter 7, it talks about this. So even the mathematics in the Bible can be trusted. Now there's one more, and I don't have a slide for this, and I do apologize, but there is one more, and it's, it's about blood. You see, our first president actually died because he got a cold. Now he did not die from the cold. He actually died because back then they used to do what's called bloodletting. They believed if you wanted to get better, or if you're sick, I'm sorry, if you're sick, you have bad blood. They, they would actually put leeches on you or they would cut the inside of your arm and they would let you bleed out just a little bit and you would feel better, was their theory. But unfortunately, if they would have read their Bibles that was sitting on the nightstand right next to the first president of the United States, he might be alive today. Well, maybe not today, but he would have lived a lot longer, that's for sure. But the thing is, is the Bible states the life of the flesh is in the blood. But they thought, all you got to do is take out the blood if you're sick. Hmm. You see, science, and I'll put, in, put science in quotations, science thinks it knows better. But the fact is, is that the Bible is far, is, it is light years of, in front of science, and it always has been, it always will be. And now, I put this together for one primary reason. I hope to give all of you a little bit, just, just a little bit of encouragement. You can trust the Word of God. Even if there's something in science that you may not fully understand, the Word of God is to be our foundation. The Word of God. Science, and once again, I'm, I'm just going to say it again, science is slowly catching up with what the Bible has, ha has to say about the world. When it comes to science and mathematics and many other things. Now, this has been Justin with Biblical Chili, and I want to just give you guys some of the tools to help you walk the talk of a Christian life. Love you guys. Hope to talk to you later.